Welcome to Chaotic Harmony. My name is John. This is Crystal. We talk about the joys and the challenges of teaching music in the elementary school classroom. We share struggles, we brainstorm solutions, and we would love to have you join us. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our final episode for the third season of Chaotic Harmony. I'm Crystal. I'm John John. I'm Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi. Hi. How are you? We're I'm so Mark. glad that Long you're back. Long time no see. We it's got Mark you back, too. you guys. Yeah. Hi. We rescued him. <laughs> Thanks. From the district. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see a suit and tie? I don't see a suit and tie. Yeah. No suit and tie <laughs> today. There's no today. suit and tie today. And cardigan. No, we Indeed. really wanted to bring Mark back in and check in with him now that he's had a whole year up at the top. So, Indeed. And it's more kind of checking with you guys. Yeah. Oh. That's for Are real. Are you going to be interviewing us? That's, that's, that's what's going on here? <laughs> Didn't tell you that. <laughs> we know we've been MIA for about a month. Yeah. Uh, this, the end of the year hit us really hard. Yeah. I think the last episode we published was like right after spring break. Yeah. And we recorded before that. So there's so we much has happened this quarter. We the best of intentions. Oh, yeah. We really we did. did. Yeah. We had mm-hmm. a lot of sketches of what we wanted to put up, but like, ooh, a lot happened. A lot happened. Yes. Many lives were lived in the Indeed. last 30 days. So here we are. We're glad to be back with you and we really want to catch up. Mm-hmm. So Jonathan and I, the last thing that we did together was we got on a plane and we went to Indiana. Yes. And I know a few people who followed you, especially on social media, mm-hmm. have been asking about that. So first off, I'm super jealous. Aww. I just I just want to make that known. Like I saw you guys we are going. I'm like, you. I want to be there. Yeah, you should yeah, have been you there. were missed. Yeah. You were missed. I felt yeah. it. Yeah, mm-hmm. though we were missing a leg of the tripod. <laughs> yes, we were. <laughs> we really were. Us flying out as a red eye was a mistake. Yeah, that I was never want to do that again. So just let it. Just, if you ever see us post something on social media, hey, we're going out <laughs> at a red eye, just, just stop. Just t- t- like message us. You don't want to do that. Turn around. Go back. Get or, a new ticket. Or just yeah. Venmo for coffee. There yeah. We'll put your well, Venmo in the, in the notes. Hey, it oh. doesn't matter how much coffee you drink. You just yeah. feel like death for a few days. Exactly. We're, I've we're, gone on terrible flights for vacations before, but to drop out of the sky and then start teaching yeah. immediately after was a whole new level. Crystal and I were on a couch just yeah, we lying were. down watching Schitt's Creek, and uh-huh. we were just zonked. Zonked. Because Is that going to have to get bleeped? No. No. <laughs> it's a CH. It's a CH. <laughs> <laughs> totally fine, my dude. Jonathan had never seen Shit's Creek before. Uh, you I was like, too. Our, oh my God. <laughs> I've, oh, so I've How seen are we friends? pieces. <laughs> How much time do you have? <laughs> this is gonna be a four-parter. Um, yeah, pretty much. I, I've seen parts of it, but and, and Brianna watches it or watched it because it's finished now. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, that's yeah. correct. And yeah, I, what I saw, I enjoyed, but I just never committed. Well, it's an enjoyable. We fully initiated Jonathan, mm-hmm, fair. and by we, I mean me and Lori because Lori came with us. Indeed. So it was the three of us. We um, we followed Lauren, um, mm-hmm. our administrator, um, who left us for Indiana, and she went to Butler University I'm right out there. <laughs> <laughs> Indiana to um, direct their community arts school and we miss her so much Indeed. and uh, she is doing what she does and she is moving and shaking out there and so she invited us out to Indiana to start the first year of what she she is hoping will be an annual thing where she puts her current college students and teaching artists through a summer boot camp for her music teachers who go out into schools mm-hmm. community centers and they do um, they do private lessons they do group lessons they run summer camps for students all across uh, Indianapolis and um, she wants to make it uh, something that is really open to everybody no matter what level of income they're at or what neighborhood they live in uh, which is really similar to what she did yeah. in Chula yeah. Vista Pretty much, so yeah. she brought Jonathan and me and Lori out to um, to give a lot of sessions about um, well I gave a lot of like uh, behavior management mm-hmm. uh, intro to process teaching um, I, we did a lot of different things. I talked about puppets in the classroom yep. and talked about um, just being a, a warm, demanding teacher of excellence. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lori talked about, uh, she gave a really powerful session about LGBTQIA plus welcoming all. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she gave like an ORF process string session. Jonathan, I you want to talk uh, about what you did? Yeah, I had uh, a couple of small stuff here and there with ukuleles, also doing concert band, but in the scope of a classroom as opposed to one-on-one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also I was in charge of a lot of the ending sessions with movement, which was a lot of fun as well. I, one of the people's responses like, maybe I should just stop being music just be a dancer. Yeah. I think they said I'm going to low key quit teaching music and be a dancer. We now. have dance <laughs> openings in Chula Vista Elementary School. <laughs> just want to plug that in. 
Uh, it was really a beautiful thing. It was great, yeah. And her goal through all of it was she wants her teachers to bond with each other and have a similar dynamic to what we were able to build together in Tula Vista and to um, develop that teacher presence where mm-hmm. you walk into a room and you command attention. Sure. Um, so that was the goal of the week. And I think uh, we laid some foundations, and I'm excited to see where it grows. Yeah, it was really cool. Also, like as you mentioned earlier, just this seeing the communal elements being fostered from this and seeing students just work and interact and do cool stuff and improvise mm-hmm. together and it's just like it just makes me re- like realize or some cool stuff There's yeah some cool stuff in Orf. it breaks barriers down and when you take that courageous step of going from being a student to being a teacher yep. um you need to be willing to do some really hard work on yourself because yep. you can't lead a group of students through something that you haven't gone through yourself mm-hmm. can i be controversial for a second yes you do can. it okay so I apologize if I ruffle feathers. Um, not my podcast anymore, so not my problem. Um, but uh, about a month ago, I attended the Equity Conference here in San Diego, mm-hmm. and I sat in on a, a session, and it was supporting uh, transgender, transgender and LGBTQIA mm-hmm. students. And one of the quotes that that really struck with me and like has really resonated with me is, you can believe what you want at home. Um, everyone can believe what they want at home, but every student has a right to feel safe at school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it just like, that was for me, like just, yes, like that really sums up what we're trying to do yeah. f- with public education. And it's like, mm-hmm. we want these kids to be safe. We want them to be able to have adults who care about them. And mm-hmm. it is a very complex, a very challenging thing. Mm-hmm. And there's lots of emotions, lots of feelings, but when we boil it down to students feeling safe, we need to be able to provide that for them, mm-hmm. yeah. um, regardless of our personal beliefs, because we're educators first and we teach kids first. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And when you start talking about equity and equality and racial justice and those sorts of things, that is an uncomfortable place for a lot of people to go. Mm-hmm. And we need to be able to put that aside in the interest of making everybody feel safe, because we can unknowingly do a lot of harm with the things that come out of our mouths if we haven't done the work on ourselves. And so the whole goal of going through training like that is not to change you know anybody's personal beliefs but to be able to walk into a classroom with a very diverse group of students who are sitting there and not do any further harm but Mm -hmm. to actually be able to lead them towards the goals of becoming musicians and artistic people Mm -hmm. um and do it in a way that is safe for everybody Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah thanks for letting me go there yeah, I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think that's really important because um, in all of these trainings that I've been a part of, it, um, you know, when we start sitting around the table afterwards and, and start kind of breaking it apart or in the, the surveys afterwards, um, it's hard not to broach those sorts of topics without them getting political. Yep. Um, and that's not the goal of this. It's not trying to change anybody's core beliefs. It's not trying to change how anybody votes. Um, it's just trying to... How can we get in a room and live together and grow towards artistry and grow towards working together without doing harm to each other? So that's tricky. I think something you said there caught me. Like, Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people, when you hear the term politics, it seems like, oh, this is taboo. We shouldn't talk about this. Mm -hmm. But I I mentioned this several times before. We're afraid of it. We're afraid of it, but yeah. public education is political. Yeah. That in and of itself, and everything we do is political. Mm-hmm. Um, the question isn't so much how can we make sure that we're not touching touch, uh, touchy topics or how we make sure that we're not touching on pol- uh, politics or religion or et cetera, but how do we come to the table together and how do we make sure that all students feel safe? Yeah. And how can we be all the things that we are and still talk to each other? Yeah, because I feel like there's a big failing of the prior generations of just, let's not talk about it. Because... Mm-hmm. We need to do it in a professional way, mind you. Mm -hmm. But also we need to do it, we can't just, if we don't talk about it, then the status quo will constantly live on. Hmm. And the status quo might not be good for everyone. Yeah. It hasn't been. Your brain brain is tickling. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) I have thoughts. Um, I don't know how to organize them in a coherent way, but I... I'm a terrible person. No, not at all. (laughs) Um, First... I'll, I'll start here and then maybe by the time I finish and by the time you answer, my brain will allow me to mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. formulate the other ones. As teachers mm-hmm. teaching, first year back from virtual, mm-hmm. help me understand as a newer administrator how to best support you in this work. Because I know that there's professional learning. I know that there's all that. Yep. But one of the things that I learned this year rather quickly is the capacity for new learning wasn't there as it's Mm -hmm. been in years past. The Mm -hmm. desire for connection and community was much higher. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there were still many restrictions throughout the entire year. Mm -hmm. And so we've now kind of transitioned into this time where 
everyone doesn't want the Zoom meeting, but they want the convenience of it. Right. And so trying to meet in person now is inconvenient mm-hmm. when we can just hop on a Zoom. But when I'm on a Zoom, I'm doing three other things. Okay, My, so it's not just inconvenient. It's exhausting. Sure. We okay. don't have the physical stamina to sit through meetings like we used to. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I think, though, also, as, like, <clears throat> you're speaking from a new administrator, but also, mm-hmm. like, to a lot... Like, I feel like I've been surrounded by a lot of new administrators recently. That's been going on with a lot of yeah. There's been a lot of turnover. a lot of shuffling going on, mm-hmm. and I think that for me, like um, my response to that is yes, we need to give grace to a lot of the t- uh, teachers who have less, like who have varying capacities, but also I think there, I've noticed that a lot of the new administrators are unsure what to do with it, and because of that, there's been a lot of balking. I would rather have someone take a stance and go forward with something. And yes, that might not be applicable to everyone, but then that administrator takes the grace to make sure that they're okay. But um, I've just heard, I've, there's just been a lot of silence from a lot of administrators, and it's made us who are boots on the ground not sure what to do or not sure how to work in a um, well-oiled capacity. If that makes sense. Sure. Yeah. And okay, so I hear that um, processing. We'll mm-hmm. continue to process, but from a logistical standpoint because that's one of the things i've ran into this year um in this position is the logistical challenges that exist within a school system are Mm -hmm. immense yes they are and um dealing with all these different levels of education schedules mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and all of that and knowing like this work is super important Mm -hmm. and in order for us to support kids better we need to kind of go through it and hash it out Mm -hmm. but when Okay. And so, yeah. from from your from your perspective, when would you like to see it? If you had that option of like, okay, well, I we need to do this. In my opinion, I think we should do this here instead of this. So I am convinced that the way forward is we need to get on the same page as far as communication styles, sure. um, and we need to start using the same language for the things that we are dealing with. Because we do come from a lot of different backgrounds, we come from a lot of different school settings, we have different numbers of, of students, we have different populations, we have different demographics that we serve, we even have different disciplines that we teach as far as like strings or band or mm-hmm. whatever. Sure. Um, but when it comes down to it, we are teachers and we are teaching excellence and we're teaching perseverance through the you know means of music. And we need to get on the same page as far as the language that we use for the hurdles that we are coming across. And you may need to be open to new learning and to new mm-hmm. ideas. And we need to be open and vulnerable with each other. And so I'm convinced that the way forward is by working on our soft skills together, by those communication skills. So those people skills, the, um, the security of being able to examine your ugly parts and um, and work on them mm-hmm. and uh, bring your best to the students and have the confidence that you're bringing the best to the students and providing that safe space while also watching out for and taking care of yourself with your own triggers because we all have them. We've all had trauma and we've especially all gone through this collective trauma, you mm-hmm. know, as a society in the mm-hmm. last couple of years, although we've experienced it in very personal ways. And um, I think that's what it comes down to. I think we need to get comfortable with that, that we're all broken people and we're all working towards wholeness Mm -hmm. and we do acknowledge that. And then we need to put that aside in um, pursuit of betterment for the kids. And I think that's the piece we're missing. It's like, we need to say this is hard, you know? Sure. I, I agree with you, Crystal. I, I feel like people like you are more receptive than the, and bringing that to people who are less receptive or just, I don't know. Um, I think that needs to be there. I think for sure it needs to be there. I feel like I agree with you. I just, how do you work with that with when you have a district that's so decentralized? Right. That's, and that's tricky. And I don't know how, how that looks. And I, 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 we can mention all these great things. I just, I don't know how to make, the, what you're talking about is stuff of the heart. And mm-hmm. that requires a lot of personal work. And, mm-hmm. That's not something that any administrator can mandate, I feel like. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to be a great teacher without doing it. You're right. I think it's something that we talked about in the last episode with Darlene. Like, you have to make sure that if you're going to teach SEL, which everyone should be, you have to do the work yourself. Land your butt in therapy. Indeed. Yeah. But that, that talking back to the audience right here with Mark, like, yeah. I don't know what the solution is. I, I, I guess for me, I, I think, I think, I think we don't have to land in therapy though. I think we can start with just somebody who, instead of talking about like procedures for the classroom right away or talking about curriculum, like we talk about team building, like maybe we do something like, 
like leadership training because at its core teaching is leadership. And so maybe we approach it from that angle of like, let's, let's do strengths training, you know, like get back to that kind of a lens and like, let's talk about what we're good at. And when we're together as a team and we're strategizing as a district, because we do need to work together in order to build something as a whole, then how can everyone contribute and how can everybody understand their piece of the puzzle? What do you think about Mm. that? Yeah, I think that that's definitely a way forward. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I don't know how that could look logistically and like what that looks like essentially um, because of everything else that's needs to be, needs to happen. There's so many things. And I, I learned something this year. Hmm, I would love to hear it. Please tell us. I learned that CASP testing, Uh if there, if a school doesn't reach a certain percentage, whatever the percentage difference is. So just for the sake of this conversation, I don't think these are the exact numbers. Let's say the school needs to reach 95% um, Mm -hmm. students taking the test. If a school reaches 90%, Mm -hmm. what they do is to make up for that extra 5%, they give those scores to get to 95% at the lowest possible um, score. And so then it brings the entire scores down. And then that affects lots of things. Yeah. And like that's all tied to funding. Yeah. And wow. so um and then Do we have a chaotic <coughs> scoop right now? Wow. Scoop? Yeah, chaotic scoop. <laughs> um there's the rainbow sherbet. <laughs> <laughs> and so Wow. When there's that pressure too, like wow. you gotta focus on those other things. And yeah. it it is I, it's very there are there are very many principals in our district specifically who mm-hmm. are doing an incredible job, yeah. and there are many schools that are doing an incredible job, mm-hmm. and not not to take away from anything that they're doing, but I want to honor the, like I want to honor teachers and I want to help them and I want them to be happy to come to work. I want them to feel fulfilled, mm-hmm. um, and I know that that work needs to happen of the internal reflection and working on yourself to become better for your kids. So you need to get more so. kids to come to school. The way we get more kids to come to school is they're excited to come to school. VAPA, we know, increases their willingness to come to school. Sure. Right? Sure. So happy VAPA teachers equal more kids going to school. Sure. Right? Sure. So that's what we're talking about. Like, we need to get, we need to, yeah, that's how we need to address our teamwork issues and, like, getting on the same page. And I, that's what I think. I think we, we get that sense of teamwork and what we're building towards and have those group goals and then it hopefully spreads. Mm, that's my theory. My addition to that, I think you're right. I, for sure, happy, you know, happy teachers being like, me, happy cows like come from a California. Zone. <laughs> but the thing is also like... Just ha- not the ones in Bakersfield. <laughs> <laughs> uh, King County, I'm sorry. Those cows. Ooh. Those are not happy California cows. <laughs> nah. um, to all people in Kings County, I love you. Um that all said, like I feel like, what do you measure happiness? And I feel like also, I'm thinking a lot of not just happiness, but also <sighs> perception from general ed teachers of what VAP teachers do. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, like that's another element. Like there, there are so many systems. Like there are so many systems and so many things that you need to address, Mark. And it's it's I, there's you have such a big burden. <laughs> you have a huge burden. And I don't think... I, I, it comes really down to prioritizing it. Uh, priority, yeah. I also think it comes down to delegating as well. Yeah. That but think, what are the most immediate needs? The most immediate needs right now are like, <laughs> we've got to get back on the same team. That's true. But also, how do you get general ed teachers on our team, though? Yeah, but and we have to be a team before we get them on our team. Both need to happen at the same time. Otherwise, you know how fickle VAPA can be, like where the, the sustainability VAPA can be yeah. at any district, really. And so we, at the same time, yes, we need to create a team, but also we need general ed teachers on our team as well. And yeah, I think it's like the coordinator all years is trying to convince people on how you can weave yourself into the fabric of your school culture. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <sighs> Dude, you've been you've been rocking it. You've been rocking yeah. it. It's well, a, thank you. That's kind. Um, but I, 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 you know, these are the questions that I ask myself, and I know mm-hmm. more arts is always the answer. Mm-hmm. Um, however. I also know that there needs to be the buy-in. Yeah. And there needs to be um, something that we're missing. And I don't quite know what that is, with the exception of people need to experience it. So I think experiencing it, one, yes. So earlier you talked about um, how Lauren is attempting to help her teachers by giving them experiences. And the way that 
the music teachers got so close was through the experiences yeah. of ORF. Yeah. Um, so providing those experiences, absolutely we need to do. Mm-hmm. Um, how do we do it in a way that's accessible to everybody, not just to those who are high achievers? Mm-hmm. You know, so those are kind of my the, the questions that I'm pondering, the questions I'm thinking, and like, like not just the people who dedicate two weeks of their summer to become <laughs> that, more excellent in their profession, that or the people who host a podcast, or the people who mm. win awards, or the people who are constantly saying, "Yeah, let's do it," and like yeah. those who are like really to run, like let's run together. Yeah. Yes, yeah. But if we run too far, those who aren't running with us are gone. Then I and think we've left them in the dust, that, and that's not good for a team. Then that's the own. I, I don't want to say the onus per se, but like that's. Again, delegation mm-hmm. is a big part. You have too much on your plate. Yeah. I think that those in, not necessarily those in leadership as far as admin, but those in leadership as far as music teachers in the district, mm-hmm. whatever your district would be, it may be, they need to bring other people up. That's what it comes down to. Sure. We're in an interesting transition period um, in our district building where we went from no VAPA teachers to a bunch of them. And yay, we're all building this thing together to now we're shifting to sustainability. And Jonathan made the interesting observation that now we're the old guard. Yes, we are. Even though we've been there for, you know, just six seven years. Seven years, six years, yeah. Yeah, we're going into our seventh and year. we have, unfortunately, people who were <coughs> here longer than us no right. longer with us. Right, who are, you know. Who just left. Who just, yeah, well, right. Uh, upon the years, like other people like Michael Gray, for example, like. Sure. It's been upon the years. People who started this journey with us have moved on yeah. for retirement or just We're the olds. I know. My knees feel it. We're the old. So how, how do we how do we help people catch the vision? We no longer have that fresh, like we're doing something brand new energy. You're right. And we're exhausted because we've come out of a pandemic. We're exhausted. Like, so so then I'm supposed to lean on teachers to help? Yeah. Well, but I you're think, exhausted too, so I, I hear saying, that. You know? You're right. And, and so sh- how much do I then lean on you when I know you're exhausted, when I know you're tired? So what I'm saying is like instead of um, focusing on like this is what we need to do pedagogically and this is these are the procedures that we need to bring in, like let's focus in on soft skills. What are your strengths already? What good? What things are you already good at? And then it just like seriously pick your modality. Like it could be like fascinate training or... Um, I mean, we we get nerdy about the Enneagram, or um, it could be you know Strengths Finder. Like seventeen minutes in, pick one. You know, <laughs> pick one of the many things that are really helpful for leadership training. Run everybody through the survey for whatever it is. Have a, and then have a day of training of like, look, here's our whole team across the district. This is what everybody's good at. Here's our goals for next year. Here's where everybody fits in with those goals. We need everybody on the team. That's that's my that's my I, suggestion. I also think about like. I agree with you, Crystal. I'm not trying to neglect what you said. Um, uh-huh. But I, I hear a but. It's not so much a but. It's more like an and. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I think that's, that's needed. I think also, I, I go back to the idea of delegation. There are, I think about a lot of, something I've learned over the years as a music teacher is that there are parents who want to help. Sure. There are parents who want to help. And when you ask them to help, um, they become part of the community more and more. Sure. <laughs> and there are, as, as exhausted as probably 80% of the teachers are, if not more, there are people that still are willing to give at least 5% more. And if they are given a, a form of leadership to help like, pass out or help give out, et cetera, like mm-hmm. these ideas that you want to give, they become part of the community. And it's less about, and it's never been about the Mark show, but it's less about the VAP coordinator show. <laughs> so our listeners, Mark just flaunted his Mark hair. Um, <laughs> uh, I wish I had hair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, you really, could stroke your eyebrows. I stroke my eyebrows. <laughs> yes, but it's less about than a one person taking it all, and it's more about the community. Sure. I think also about my, my church. That's something that we do a lot. Like how can it's, my, my pastor is like a concert. It's never about me. How can I make sure that other people get involved so that they can feel like this is their church? Mm. How can we have? other music teachers make it sure it feels like it's their community and also not just helps mm-hmm. them keep the, uh helps them feel like they belong but also they like, helps them see that like the longevity of what they're doing sure or not now that we've told you how to do your job do it thank you thank you, thank you for <laughs> me job. I, I've, I've just sat in the, in the office all day and stared at a wall so this is super helpful thank you like, i know that's not like, true. like i really like getting induction teachers specifically for music mm-hmm what? I know, right? I really do believe, though. We did that. Oh, yes. my God. Wait, wait, wait. What? Say again? We, we have induction teachers specifically for music. Yes. 
John's one. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's a step in this. That's a leadership. step. There's step. so many things. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There are so many. It, <laughs> but I, I, I really, I really, as someone who is so community oriented, sure. I'm someone that truly does believe that, that there are people that want to help that just yeah. don't know how, what to do. I think that being able to get back in the same room together is going to be a big deal. And that for those of true. you that don't live in California, we've still been under some crazy COVID restrictions mm -hmm. all the way through the end of the year. Like we couldn't. We had one in person all VAPA meeting. I, yeah, yeah, one at the end of the year mm -hmm. that and I was couldn't fun. go to because I had COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I had another student. Um, but then we're trying to spread leadership. People got to show up. I know. Yeah, people no. got to show up, and, and we have to be able to meet in person. And, and I think about, like, the whole... And we need to not get COVID. So. And I what? think also that's another element, like... You know I'm teasing. <laughs> um, it's kind of like the whole John Adams element. Like, there was a Washington, and then John Adams comes second. And, like, I... F Are you saying I'm John Adams? You're not wow. John Adams, but this, this syndrome of people, like, I'm... I'm I, I, I think anyone that t comes in sec uh, afterwards, there's always this question Lauren mark is of. George. That's what I'm hearing. I'm sorry. Lauren is George, and I'm John. That's. Um, <laughs> Who's Hamilton? He's gone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so there's always that hesitancy, and I, like I think that that and then once again the onus goes on the music teachers to help like them like help, help the new folk to realize hey like we should go to these communal events. I agree, and yeah. Yeah, but you're tired. We're tired. But but yes, I can't I can't I can't get fifty. I'm better after five. sleeping sure. yesterday. This is day two of summer. <laughs> no, I slept yes. all day yesterday. Yeah, I hear you, and mm -hmm. I, I I know that it's not if it, it if it solely relies on the VAPA coordinator, it's not going to survive. Oh, it ain't going to happen. Um, yeah, but you can't carry that. I mean, I have been working out, but um, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> um, to our listeners. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> um, I won't, I'll say that, I won't push and push and push and kill and drive into the ground. It's just, it's not mm -hmm. my personal, sure. how I view things, how I view people in relationships. So I agree. Um, I think it is all, it's, it's all it's relational. All relational. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's all relationship driven. And like, even this morning I had, uh, I met a prospective teacher for coffee and we just chatted mm -hmm. and I went up and after we got our coffee, I sat down, I'm like, I just want to let you know, this is not a formal interview. I'm not here to like question all your skills. Like if, it's just me to sit like it's for you to hear about Chula mm -hmm. Vista it's for me to hear about you and if it's a good fit like let's try to find like let's yeah. try to but if it's not like I'm happy to try to help you find a better fit in another district like mm -hmm. that's that's what it for me like that's what it's about it's about mm -hmm. that portion of it and on, again on the teacher side but also knowing like we have some practices that could probably be you know better right um but every, but time is finite mm -hmm. and yeah. so I have some plans this next year that I think will help more align this. I'm not going to share because no spoilers. Mm -hmm. So the end of the episode, Ooh. right? We'll see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that is those are things that I'm currently working on and on how to share that leadership and how to do those things. And I, there are plans in place, but as I've learned over this last year, things don't move as quickly as in my head they should move or sure. how... I anticipate Your things moving. Ended. You know, it's it, and there are there are things I'm like yes, and they're like no, you have to do this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, let's go here. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, okay. And so there, I, I, I've had my hands slapped a few times because I thought yeah, yes, this is how we do it. Like yeah, of course, this makes sense. I'm trying to be helpful. Not what we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you know, um, mm -hmm. and it's learning the system and everything. But we have. We have an incredible team and across the district, um, across the disciplines, and there are so many fun personalities, so many unique personalities, and I like I'm super grateful mm -hmm. and I know that it's been hard and I know that it's 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 been that and I think for me, and again, this is me just probably being silly, but like I feel bad that I don't necessarily know what you've gone through because I didn't do it myself. Yeah, I did the virtual thing, but I didn't do it coming back. And so while I don't necessarily have this full understanding, and I think that might also be part of why I'm hesitant to like, here's all some more stuff to do, like, because I don't know exactly what you've gone through and I see it and I see that you're tired and I hear it and I'm mm -hmm. just like, ah, I wish like there's more that I could do for you all to support you. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's with everything in life. There's just not enough time and yep. there's, you know, and not, not enough, enough resources. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, That's what it comes and, down and to. And so we, we do what we can. Mm -hmm. And um, I think this year, 
there was so many great things that happened um, mm-hmm. and so many wonderful moments, so many wonderful, uh, I think there were some new friendships. Mm-hmm. I had a teacher um, come up to me, one of our VAPA teachers, and like, you know, I heard you in trying to, you know, be more involved in the school. So I joined the school's SSC, the school site council. So now yeah. I'm on the, like, figuring out how we're spending our money. And like, you know what? They said that there's extra money. So let's put it towards VAPA. I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's do that. Nice. You know, and yes, there, kudos to where that was. Kudos. Yeah, yeah. And there are lots of small victories like that yeah. around. And yes. um it's so important. Yeah, and I think just for me being It's my turn to go on it next year. Being, my art teacher good. and I trade. <laughs> <laughs> me being a millennial is like I want that really quick fix. Yeah. Like I want it instant. Sure. And it's not. And so like I like again, it's unneeded and un- unwarranted, whatever, like this pressure of like the system isn't changed after a year. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing well enough right um and and that's in no way to be to to hear anything like oh you're doing like no it's not it but it's just like i want you guys to be put in positions where everything like you have everything that you need Mm -hmm. and i want you to come to work thrilled i want you to come to work excited and i know that normally you do but there are things that aren't and so it is quite the quite the uh Quite the job, quite the task, quite the district, quite all the things. I can't think of any of the other words. Sure. Um, but you guys are killing it. You're doing such a good job. Thanks, it's Mark. been a rough year, it's but rough like, year. Lim- lim- like what you said is very true. Like as I look back, we've done some awesome stuff. We have, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. In no small part, thanks to your contributions, John, for yes. the, like what you've done to try to knit us all together. John Mady beautiful video of all of our efforts for the collaborative concert vapa festival now yeah the vapa festival Mm -hmm. thank you for correcting that um so much of it comes down to what i'm hearing both of you say putting aside that competition and that lack mindset of like somebody has to be the best Mm -hmm. and recognizing that we all have different strengths and they work together and putting that ego aside and that fear of if I'm not recognized and I'm not seen as the best, then I'm not doing good enough and I might lose something. That's what it comes down to. Everybody's so afraid, I think. It's, but like it's, There's always been that fear as a VAPA teacher in Southern California that your job can be pulled out from under you, yeah. that you're not valued. <laughs> and uh, and that's that's hard. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Yeah. And then there there just needs to not be any any hint of that in the team. We have to be able to have that safety together where we're on the same team yeah. and we don't, it's, it's kind of like what I've heard people say about the pandemic. It's like, we've all been through the same storm, but we're not all in the same boat. Um, and it's, it's really the same teaching music in Southern California. It's the same storm. We're not all in the same boat and we're trying to band together and help each other out and throw some supplies, you know, Mm -hmm. but we need to be able to look up and ask for help and recognize and not just kind of get so insular. Yeah. Yeah. Segue into the next topic, I guess. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, something that's been on my plate least recently was, um, can someone else say it? I don't like saying this, but toy boy, like, Oh, Jonathan's a toy boy. Jonathan <laughs> was nominated at his site this That's year. right. For teacher. Of the year. Of the year. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. And my school site and then one also. And, okay, we're getting there. We're building it. So oh, oh, hold okay. the yeah, applause. We're getting so, there. Okay. Just... <laughs> Sit Calm back down, the, Jonathan. Just sit back from the mic. You, you, said, <laughs> that, you said that you, said you, you didn't want to do this. Right. Right. Sit back so. from the mic, sir. I, I, this pause Time was a little too pregnant. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it, was, it was hold for applause. Okay. okay. So okay. let's try this again from the top. I'm, I'm okay. not applauding myself. Hey, welcome to Chaotic Heart. Oh, <laughs> too far. Um, too far. John was nominated by his colleagues at his site, Casillas, for Teacher of the Year. Uh, hold for applause. Then part of that process is then our assistant (laughs) superintendent and our union president went around and from all the uh, site nominees, they selected three to represent Chula Vista. John was one of the three selected for Chula Vista. Hold for applause. Yeah. And now, John, I I don't know if you've heard yet currently, but you've now um, have done the like the whatever you need to do for the county so yeah so just to those who aren't aware um, if you actually get to a point where you get to this like you have to write in the state of California I'm not sure about other states you have to write pretty much seven essays of varying lengths it, fun fact the shorter the essay the more difficult it is like straight up I wish I had 700 words for each of them not the case I had 250 for some of them it's like, Ooh. Um, and then also I did an interview 
I want to speak on the interview, but I don't want to steal what you're sharing. John's killing it. Okay. Um, I did not kill the interview, the interview I botched. That all said. Um, did you hear back yet? No, I've not heard back. Okay, so you don't know. So, pff, yeah. fair enough. But something do that, that was. So, one of the be questions better. that was asked is why do you deserve to be Teacher of the Year? And I look back and I. Yeah, it, it, that's a hard topic to answer. Yeah. Why do you deserve this, Jonathan? Like, and so. <laughs> hang on. Put a pin in that while you all let you formulate. Side anecdote. You deserve to be Teacher of the Year because, I kid you not, I walk okay. into Casillas to give John uh, something, um, a different award that he won from Arts and Power. Yeah, you did. And um, so I walked in and Deanna, mm-hmm. so Deanna is the secretary at Casillas. So uh-huh. I walked in and I said hi. And she knows, like, she recognizes me. And she's like, I don't remember your name. I'm like, my name's Mark. She's like, you're John's friend. Uh, like, Vap coordinator. Yep, I sure John's am. Friend. Yep. So I am not the va- So you deserve to be teacher of the year because district oh, officials are just John's friend. That's I wish I was, right. You know, and I was so told, it's you know, <laughs> anecdote like two months prior, like in, in from the future. That 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 would help. No, but like I think about something that's 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 like I've really that. First off, it's really weird doing this stuff. Like I. Mm-hmm. In one it sense, is. Okay, I'm going to be straight up honest to everyone. In the one sense, I am someone that does not like attention. Mm-hmm. In the other sense, I'm someone who loves it. So, yeah. like, I, and so yeah. the thing is, there's this whole back and forth. But that question has been stuck in my brain because I realized I did not answer it to the way I wanted it to. But also, I have noticed that going through this whole process, I have thought a lot about, lo and behold, once again, st- systems. Systems and systems and systems is something I've been focusing a lot. And the reason why I deserve, I'm putting quotation marks to anyone who's not li- watching a video, deserve to be Teacher of the Year is because, like, this is, again, a controversial topic. I was talking to Jesse Rogers about this, like, the other day. It's like, everyone says that I do this for the kids. Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. But I do this for the sake of public education. Because I believe in the system of public education. Mm -hmm. I am someone that truly believes in that this is like the table that we wrestle ideas upon. Mm -hmm. And for anyone else who splinters off, like, sadly, your voice is not part of this wrestling. And the wrestling is not a bad thing. Even though we have different ideas, like the wrestling is not a bad thing. So that's how we as aggregately we come together and create better ideas together. Um, I mentioned this because you said something. (laughs) You said something. Um, Boats. Storms. Boat storms. Yeah, we're all in di- like we've all suffered mm-hmm. COVID differently. And I am like, as if you look at the at everyone's state of like, er- everyone came at it differently. Everyone from different backgrounds, whatnot, had came at it differently. I'm going to end off with the notion of we do this because the, we, I do this because public education needs to be uplifted better music and publication public education needs to thrive mm-hmm. it cannot be just to the to the, the privileged it needs to be to all people mm-hmm. and so if anything from this to- teacher of the year the toy boy stuff that i've been undergoing like i've really thought about okay how can i make not so much one child's more as one classroom's experience better but how can we make this whole system better mm-hmm. that's a big thing to tackle but i think that not enough people are people i actually think about it, but like i don't know if enough people are tackling it mm-hmm. the, the, the right way i don't know so we we have been facing so many systems like you've been saying since we've been doing this work in chula vista yep. trying to put music back in the schools yep. we had so much momentum going we did and then <laughs> what happened yeah so mm-hmm. there's this thing <laughs> right that starts with c and with ovid yeah and we lost it was a 19 at the end actually a lot we lost a lot and so i don't think that we've given ourselves enough space this year to just reel a little bit from it and everybody seems to think that we need to be back to normal no. when the kids are not back to normal and nothing is normal we just got the masks off in march three months ago yeah um and we're hoping that we can teach with our whole faces from here on out but we don't even know if that's going to happen and it's it there's still a lot of uncertainty and there's still a lot of work that we need to do and we need to recognize that dealing with all that we've been through in the last couple of years and dealing with what the kids have been through and us coming back together that's exhausting it's work it's more work than we had to do before it's emotional work sure and so we have to rest a little bit more and just like 
you know, adjust our expectations. So like, instead of like, let's, let's get back to normal or let's have all of these big goals. How about we just scale them back a little bit? Like, how about we just figure out how to, how to like recognize each other as professionals and communicate respectfully and help the kids communicate respectfully. I feel like if I can get to the end of next year and have us relatively happy to see each other every single time we do in music class and recognize the rules and follow them and everybody stays in the classroom without anybody having a freak out and running out the door and uh, like that'll that'll be good. Like, I agree with you. That's and, where I'm at. And also it's going to go back into the last bit we're going to share about what's going to be expecting from okay. you. But like I agree. Rest uh-huh. is super important. Yeah. And I... Th- I'm scaling back the Crystal Pridmore train a lot. <laughs> I agree, but I also fear that, because as I mentioned earlier, not everyone suffered COVID in the same way, or yeah, some sure. people thrived off COVID. Sure. And the systems of power that exist benefit off of us being weary. And I think we do need to be strong, and that takes rest. But I also... Something I've been talking about um, with another teacher is that this from here on i don't want to just be the person that just keeps on pushing i want to punch the right buttons mm-hmm. and i be need to be strategic very, about it i'm sorry be strategic about it and maybe cognizant about it. like it's not just about placing all the effort but mm-hmm. choosing how are we going to push the right buttons and to make the system work better sure and so i need i, I actually I, i'm just gonna say right and now then ex- i'm gonna say right now at this summer i'm gonna take five days off i'm just gonna hide in the desert and just like i wanted to process and like rest and like process how do i want to take this next season will mm-hmm. you be in a tent no i'm gonna be in an airbnb <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. uh but yeah i just needed some time away because rest is needed rest is needed but then comes back to how do i punch the rest right doesn't mean you're giving up and it doesn't mean you're checking out it just means you're taking care of yourself yeah, so when I say that, I don't mean like we're we're giving up. I'm saying we're we're recognizing that the work that we're doing is greater than what we were, mm-hmm. and it takes more. It takes more everything. Takes yeah. Yeah. It takes more people. Yeah, it does. It takes more emotional energy. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, so we've covered a lot of ground. How about we talk about expectations and hopes for next year? What are your expectations, hopes, dreams? What do you see? Where do you see us going, Mark? I see us going. Where do you see me going? <laughs> <laughs> what awards haven't you won? Right. Oh, gosh. Please stop. <laughs> this, you now, you this set is the yourself up. No, this is the side <laughs> Yeah. Um, man, I want us to go, and I want us to have more fun mm-hmm. in, like with our jobs. Mm-hmm. We're the coolest mm-hmm. jobs. Well, you have the coolest jobs. Um <laughs> Getting to getting to impact students' lives, getting to speak life into an entire school, like that responsibility, like uh, yeah, responsibility, like that is so cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I I'm excited for people to kind of get back to that, um, or get there for the first time, you know, and just have that mind uh, that mind um, that mind shift. Um, I'm also really excited about the work that we're going to continue to do as a team. Mm-hmm. Um, so we this year um there was a shift in how meetings went and in pre- uh, previous years every discipline met uh, roughly every month and so as i was sitting down at the beginning of july um i was looking at the calendar and realized oh i can't plan every single week or every sing- like it just there aren't enough weeks because there are conferences there is this there's that mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. the months just it doesn't add up for everyone unless we're running three or four meetings on a single day and that just doesn't i don't love that mm-hmm. so i made a switch this year um i try not to make too many large switches um for me personally uh this first year was a lot of information gathering um and you know keeping everyone above the water essentially if we're yeah. using the boat metaphor um or at least not sunk. Um, the boat or ship metaphor. What kind of like? Did you know that a ship is safest in the harbor? But that's not what a ship was built for. I'll let you ponder that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> touche, um, good sir. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, but that was one of like the bigger, bigger things that we shifted this year was instead of doing discipline specific every single time is we did a bi-monthly discipline specific and then an all VAPA. And that's going to continue for next year. And I'm super excited about, about that because I think 
as we've shared, as we've seen, as I've heard, um, community and working together and giving more leadership opportunities, allowing people to buy into our program. That's not going to happen if you're all on your own disciplines. And I know as much as you love each other and whatnot, you got to make friends with some of the other teachers. Kind of hate her. Hey, this girl hey here. now is not the time. Okay. We're okay. Charm. We're fine. It's Crystal. fine. Hey. We're in my house. Hey. Hey. Continue. I'm sorry. Hey. I did a goof. Go for it. Three things you like about Crystal now. Go. Yeah. What do you like about Crystal, John? Uh, she's freaking imaginative. <laughs> she does a great job working with the people, and she pulls um, amazing lessons out of her out of her hat. Like, out of her wherever. <laughs> 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 Mark, continue. Um, <laughs> man, so you I, miss I, us. <laughs> <laughs> I do miss you. Um, so yeah, so I'm really excited to continue that work. I have some things again. I'm not going to share now because um, they're still kind of in the process of being worked out and, and whatnot. But I have some things to try to help better communication. I think that that's one of the things that we we can improve on is communication for teachers across disciplines communication teachers with me and you all um we tried a couple i tried a couple things this year they failed it happens, it happens. we're gonna move on um yeah so th- those are some of the things uh, i'm excited because we're we're attempting to have some more uh outside uh workshops or outside people come in to lead some cool. workshops and, and to, to to lead some stuff um, I'm excited that we can potentially do th- more things in person because um, that's what I'm hearing is that yeah. we just need to be in the room together um, mm-hmm. where it happened. Yeah, absolutely. The room where it happened. Sorry, Hamilton, you died. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> just one. Shoot. Well, it was he just threw, one. It was just one. Right in the hip. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, and so yeah, I, those are the things I'm excited about. We have. We have some openings, and so depending on where this airs, if you're listening and you want to move to San Diego and Chula Vista, shoot me an email and let's talk. Um, what email? Mm, that's a great question. Send it to chaoticharmonyclassroom at gmail.com yeah. and we will forward, forward it. it to the right that'll mm-hmm. work. Yeah, that'll work. Um, and while you're at it, like and subscribe. Continue. Like and subscribe. Absolutely. Great Leave review. five stars. Yes, please. Yeah. Come on now. Awkward um, left turn, but good on. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a left lean. We're still, exactly. we're still moving. Left bearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like I, I want people, and I want to provide more opportunities for you to laugh together, to experience together, to have fun together. Like I said, um, we have some cool partners uh, currently who I'm in talks with to trying to have them help in certain ways. So there are lots of ideas, and there are lots of things um, that I'm excited for, and I'm excited for year two. Hmm. You know, I think. It blows my mind. It's only been one year with you. Like, <laughs> Sorry? it's been a while. I, 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 I love that you've been here, but it's just been both a long and short year. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, it, yes. it's been a weird year. Yes, it's been a weird year. That it has. You Time know, is not moving like it used to. Um, it's still a flat circle. <laughs> I will. Uh, maybe I'll share the story at the end. Um, just if you remember, you can ask me about my first month in this job. Um, but I feel like I have a lay of the land. Um, I feel more comfortable. You know with knowing who to go to, who to talk to and all these things. I'm, I'm more comfortable with principals, more comfortable with teachers. Um, and so year two, I, I'm excited to, you know, to kind of continue the work that we started and to continue to build, um, and talk about how do we make this more sustainable? So it's not, so we never go an extended period of time without the arts, Mm -hmm. but also Mm -hmm. knowing that within the larger system of public education in California, there are limitations Mm -hmm. and trying to do this in a way where people are realizing the importance and committing to it, but also knowing that in order for people to commit, they have to experience it. Mm -hmm. And so how are, or there should be, there needs to be, there will be at some point opportunities for everybody, not just VAPA teachers or even parents or families to experience it. Mm -hmm. Um, So like I've shared with you all, um, and if you don't remember, here's a refresher. No one is going to outpassion you about VAPA at your sites. Mm -hmm. And I'm still committed that no one's going to outpassion me at VAPA at the district level. 
And so <laughs> I I can't tell you how many times I've said to people, we should have full-time teachers at every single site. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're not there yet, but that'd be cool if we got there, right? Uh-huh. That's the word. Um, you know? And so <laughs> I... I I, I, like I probably annoyed people with how many times I've said it and like mm-hmm. hopes and dreams and whatnot and um, keep saying it you know I, and, it, and I'm going to you know like I, mm-hmm. th- I I truly believe that and like that is what I want to see mm-hmm. and you know I I know that there is a large financial um, barrier sure we'll Hurdle. use that word barrier um, chicken. Yeah, there's a large financial chicken attached to that. Ooh. We're not there yet, Mrs. Pridmore. It's <laughs> <laughs> all trying to turn left and right on me. Is that your way of like... You is that brought my, it. Is that my like, Oscar send-off you music? Stop talking. Me. Stop. <laughs> um, you know, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> God bless you, keep right yeah. now. <laughs> um, oh, man, you just threw me. <laughs> But that, oh, so it's just it's it's continuing to be passionate about what we do. It's continuing to share that passion with anyone and everyone who will listen, and it's continuing to try to. Um, here's where I'm at, honestly. Like last last thought, yeah. it's continuing to try to celebrate those who are doing the thing without ostracizing those who can't. Yeah. Mm. So that's that's kind of where I'm at. Um, that's where I, some of my thoughts are for next year. Um, I have lots of documents and lots of things already made that as, you know, I was transitioning to this year, just the way my mind works as opposed to Lauren's, like I needed certain things to be in this order. And like, so it was, it was me creating some stuff because that's just the way my mind worked and it helped me. And now that I have lots of those things created, it's okay. It's, it's not, I'm not, it's not going to be as time consuming or whatnot. Um, but yeah, I, I'm excited. I, I just really like helping people. Yeah. And now I get to help adults as opposed to children. Mm-hmm. And the adults who I get to help get to impact the lives of many. Yeah. And so That's I. cool. It, it is. It, it is a cool thing. And, you know, we are the largest elementary district. And I see that. In as, the state of California. In the sta- yes, apologies. In the state of California. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, in the world. And I see that as this you know this great thing with so many opportunities yes there are many challenges being Mm -hmm. 47 sites um in the following summer next year there'll be maybe 48 i believe we're gonna open up another school side note makes the whole teacher of the year thing even cooler good job jonathan yeah come Mm -hmm. on now come on hold for applause hold for applause hey um (sighs) you know and (laughs) 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 um if we get it right if we get something right, yeah, there's like the the ripple effect that it could have mm-hmm. in the state of California, and then if California is doing it, the ripple effect it could have in the United States. Mm-hmm. Like, because we're a big state, we kind of are. We're a big state, like not know? just like size wise, but pl- like population, population, also political power. Like we have a lot, we have a big say, right? And True. so you know, um, I view that as an opportunity to impact education nationally yeah Mm -hmm. and i think again we have to we have to do it the right way we do Mm -hmm. we can't just you know oh here's this big sum of money we're going to spend it all right here on the arts and now in three years it's gone so all the arts are gone so like no that's not the right way right Mm -hmm. but they're also along with that is there are many growing pains Mm. and we experienced some of those growing pains this year um you all experienced those growing pains you know and you experienced ways in which we're trying to shift certain things. Um, and I don't have all the answers. I don't like, I'm not this super smart individual who's like, this is like, this is the way, you know, I'm, I'm just a guy who's like, Hey, let's try this. Like, I think that this would be a really good idea. You know what? I think that this is really good for kids. Mm-hmm. And I think that this is better for families if we do it this way instead of that other way. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are going to be some wins and there are going to be losses. And I think, you know, one of the things people need to hear, I believe, is that it's okay to have losses, but also it's okay for your district and your administrators to have losses and mm-hmm. to fail. And I think that there, I, I have felt the pressure that I can't fail, mm. that if everything I roll out has to work. And I felt that. And I don't know if, and I don't mm. think that there's necessarily one person or one group of people or whomever is, is putting that pressure on. But because I know that the that the system it takes a while for things to roll out. Like it's not a quick pivot. It's, you know, a longer process. And so 
if my strategy is wrong, it's a lot longer to fix it than not. Hmm. And so there's there's also that where it's like... got to take your time. Yeah. You, you need to, but then there's also the immediate needs that need to be met. Sure. Right, right, right. It's a it's fun always, game of balancing. It is. And it's always <laughs> funny. I feel like there's this quote by Chris Fabzak, who's like an analyst, but like he talks about like professionals... Like, sorry, masters of any trade are few or, and far between. Mm-hmm. Like, either people are faking it or like they're working on it as we go. And like a lot of CEOs, they're just making things up as they go, seeing what works. And I feel like there's a huge deception of people who are in leadership they know they're their ish and that's not the case nope. like we're all trying we're all trying to make things work and hopefully they're trying and i know you i know you mark i know you for how long Since 11 08, years yeah oh wait so I can't, f- I almost can't 14 have. years 14, 14 years <gasps> so but no i i think there is this misconception that like people on top ha- have it which they don't And I know you, and I hope that there are more people like you who are, when they make mistakes, we're just trying to make things work for the betterment of the system. And it's unfortunate that people don't see it that way. It takes a lot of education. It does. And it takes a lot of communication, communication which, as as I've shared earlier, we're just, there's room for improvement. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've learned this year how important phrasing is. Mm -hmm. And... Yes, I, like communication's always been important and, and all this other stuff. Yes, you're right. But when you are sending it out to a large group of people, it's super important that you say what you mean and you mean what you say. And if there's any wiggle room for interpretation, it's going to be found. Yeah. And, you know, and Even again, if there's not, it still will be. <laughs> sure. You know, and, yeah. And, I, I invite people to ask questions. I invite people yeah. to push back. You're more than welcome to. Um, and it's also why we need that soft skills training so that we're not easy to um, take offense. <laughs> I had a had a meeting with a group of people who were very upset over something. And it was about an hour. And they were just so upset. And I let them. I let mm-hmm. them, you know, mm-hmm. get out all their frustration and their anger. Mm-hmm. Sat there and took it listened asked questions and then at the end i was like okay the problem isn't solved but do you feel a little bit better and i did Mm -hmm. and like i share that to to just say like (laughs) everyone's a person Mm -hmm. you know people at at your district office they're people Mm -hmm. they they got an education well I won't, not maybe not everybody, but majority got an education to help. They got okay. an education to do what's best for kids. Mm-hmm. And again, there are always rules or exceptions to the rule, um, but we shouldn't focus on that. We should focus on 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 what we're on what we try to do. Thanks for being a part of this. Hey, it's been a long time. It's thanks been for inviting many me episodes. Back. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for still being my friend after this year, <laughs> <laughs> Mark. You, I, I don't say this just because you're my friend. Like you've been doing some great stuff amongst okay, some really difficult you. stuff. Yeah, so thank like, you. thanks for taking the helm after the craziness we've all been through. It's not easy, you know. No. But we're here for not. we're here to support. Yeah, yeah. We and are. I, so and let I, me know and how I can help. All. <laughs> <laughs> we need you too. <laughs> Spicato after break. Spicato after the break. I want to take a quick break and thank my husband, Brian, who's been working behind the scenes producing these episodes every week on all of the platforms and on time. But you need to know that he is first a financial planner for Mission Trails Financial. Mission Trails Financial is a partner that seeks to guide clients in the journey to financial success. They believe that people need a financial advisor that aims to provide strategies for success. Mission Trails Financial helps people navigate investments, tax planning, and insurance. Imagine working with an advisor who isn't tied to specific brands. Mission Trails Financial has a fiduciary responsibility to act in the best interests of their clients by providing independent, objective advice. Their mission is to help clients accomplish their financial goals. As Joe Vitale once said, a goal should scare you a little and excite you a lot. Do yourself a favor and set up a time to chat with Mission Trails Financial. Visit www.missiontrailsfinancial.com or call 619-419-0238 to schedule a call. You'll be glad you did. We believe that leaning on professionals is how we get ahead. Check out the program notes for more information. Cool. Uh, we're going to do our spiccato just in a bit, but we've already done some awkward left and right turns. So we'll just say it. Thank you, everyone, so much. This has been 68. 
68 episodes? 68 episodes. Yeah, this is episode 68. Some of you have been with us since the beginning. Some of you are just new. And if you're new, I do encourage you to please make sure you uh, leave a review. Yes, Mark. I have you a question. Your hand. Isn't this technically 69 because there was the prelude? No, this that's tech- episode zero. Episodes, there's 69 right. episodes, but this is episode 68. I mean, that's fair. Thank you so much for listening. Oh <laughs> but gosh. no, seriously, uh, <laughs> make sure you leave a review. Uh, it does help out with our optics and making sure also that it helps us grow this community, something we focus so much on. Um, and so leave a review on iTunes or whatever app you're listening to. Five stars are the only ones acceptable. If you leave anything less than, I will sniff you out. We mentioned the last episode. And that'll be weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I do weird stuff. Also, if you are not <laughs> listening to us on YouTube, that's fine. But again, there are people who do. So what helps to grow this community? Make sure you go on YouTube. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and also, if you want to hit the bell, you can hit that bell 2022 style. It's up That's to you. That's right. Thank you so much, everyone. Ding. Mark provided our spiccato for today. <laughs> he did. <laughs> we have already done rubber chickens as yeah. a spiccato, but these are very specific rubber chickens. So for those who are not watching the YouTube video, mine is blue <laughs> with a red mohawk, green sunglasses, and a yellow electric guitar, and a very cool rock and roll collar. And mine is pink, and it's, it, are, my, my chicken is having this like wig. It's very Miss Frizzle style. Mm. Is it um, a wig or is it? Uh, it's rollers. Curlers. Yeah, curlers. Yeah. yeah. Curlers. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, she's I, the crazy. Cat I don't know lady hair. That's a, it, oh. I don't know hair. Why not? Uh, well, to our <laughs> listeners, I'm bald. <laughs> um, and so, uh, looking at this right now, also not just pink, not just blue hair, but also has a roller. I'm a little concerned Cat what she's going to do with that. Like with a, yeah, like a rolling pin. She's going to hit someone. Oh my gosh, what if she's baking it's something with eggs? She's got like a little like Judge Judy collar on too. Oh my gosh, Judge Judy. Um, so, are we going to do Chicken? So I I see like a whole tableau going on. Like this is the neighborhood like kid who's who's raising you know havoc in his garage with his garage band, and she's like behind the curtain, like the neighbor next door, like you know, exactly you kids and your infernal music. You didn't go rock and roll, go corrupt your That's mind. Right. I tell you what. <laughs> That's exactly right. Nailed it. Just like that. <laughs> Personal experience. <laughs> don't talk about it. We don't have that much time. Let's see. These ones do have a good texture. It does. Yeah. We could do some sort of musical. Oh, oh. Hey, hey. oh. Wow. Can you squeeze yours? This is great content, by the way. Uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> High quality. <laughs> we got to put this on TikTok. <laughs> like and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like so your idea is like textures, pink. Well, oh. so I really liked yeah. the discussion that Lori had in her welcoming all um, about getting away from um, gender binary okay. um, ways of referring to students. And so she had some suggestions. She calls her students chicken nuggets. <laughs> and so I was thinking maybe we could have like... <laughs> The Grand Nugget. The gr- <laughs> and they get to... They it's like the Grand to- Nagus. <laughs> <laughs> Two Deep Space Nine people. They get they get to hold the chicken. They're the leader. Star Trek. Maybe they get to... The Grand Nagus. Pick the first instrument or something. Okay. 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 <sighs> I feel the like... The Big Nugget. The Big Nugget. The Big, big Nuggy. That's, I mean... Lori's been copying me since the beginning. Like I call my like I know I call specific students chicken well, nuggets. Well, she calls them chickens because it's a Welsh thing. Chickens. It's a Welsh thing. I yeah. love to have. She never that shared that, like the history behind this. Oh, huh? why? Well, I assumed it was. It's a Lori thing. Maybe it's, it's a not a Welsh thing. thing. It's just a Lori thing. It's a uh, she's traveled the world abroad thing and t- stealing chickens. Oh, she calls us chickens. It's true. Chickens and, the and pumpkins. Kids are chicken, right? Yeah, chickens, pumpkins, and then the kids are chicken nuggets. Gotcha. Um, chicken nuggets the best word ever. Best two words. Sorry. Um, Is it so the, we're gonna move on. John uh, likes it. Let's see. What would I do with these? Um, I feel like you can do some sort of coding thing with blue, pink, blue, blue, pink, blue, pink, pink, blue, pink. Something, something along those lines. I'm not sure what. Hmm. Still processing. Kark, do you have any ideas? If you add them to the flock of chickens that you already have in your classroom, which I have a lot. I know you do. Do you have a lot? I have one. Okay. It's not a lot. Did okay. I share with you like the story behind the box? Oh, I remember that now. So I have a friend, uh, Kat Potter, and she lived up in Napa. And so after Orf, 
levels. She was she lived in Napa, but she sorry, she her parents lived up in Napa, but she was going back down south. I decided to buy a box of rubber chickens, but I shipped it not to my address, but to her address. <laughs> With no explanation. <laughs> no explanation whatsoever. She got her a, little was sister her opens name it up. On the yes, shipping? It was. Nice. Her little sister opens it up like, what is is this John? This is John, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so. It's a box of rubber chickens. Exactly. That's awesome. Um if you had many different colored chickens each different chicken can represent uh, a different sound or a different way in which you have to do it and then compose something with each chicken in mind so something along those lines or if you wanted to take it a more we all may look a little different but we're all kind of like working towards the same thing and being musical and even Mm -hmm. if it's just chickens like that's Mm -hmm. that's another route that you can take it well, I say we take it Ooh, in the Jesse yeah. Rogers direction. We all sample this. Oh, oh, that, oh. Was out. that was out. That was a lot. That was a lot. Then we turn it into, <laughs> into a really awesome like rock piece. I like right? that. Sample it. Yeah. I actually, so I have I have an idea because you know I'm the movement guy apparently. Um, so I don't know if you've seen the stuff that Franklin Wells sometimes puts out with like yeah. on TikTok with like the have the notation, have you moved to notation, have each color be a different level. So. Yeah. Okay, so when the blue guy... Let's just say pink is high level, blue is low, low. level. Got it. High, high, low, low, high. So with your body, uh, it has to be in that area. Interesting. It could work. It could work. You need more than one. If you have any ideas, let us know. Or if you want to send chickens to Cat Potter. <laughs> oh, she's no longer the address, I don't know. Um, Her address will be in the show notes. <laughs> <There you laughs> <go. laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, seriously, if you do have ideas, let us know. Email us at chaoticharmonyclassroom at gmail.com or add us at the socials at chclassroom. Round of the week. Okay, so I had an inspiration for our song of the week. It's not a round of the week. And I did send you guys a round, but I don't want to do that one. I changed my mind. Okay. So we're talking about rebuilding things and taking our time. And this is a song that I have not used in my classroom before this year, but it's one of my favorite Mr. Rogers songs. (gasps) Because Fred Rogers is my celebrity crush. We've established Mm -hmm. this. Um, It is... He's a beautiful soul. It's really lovely, and I've just noticed that since coming back from COVID, my students have been rushing through everything, even more so than kids normally do. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, it's been really hard to get them to slow down and in their bodies. And so something that I've been doing instead of saying for the millionth time, don't run in the halls or whatever, like I'm just trying to get them to slow down and be more mindful. And Fred has a lovely song for that. It goes, I like to take my time. I mean that when I have to do a thing, I like to take my time to do it right. I mean, I just might make mistakes if I should have to hurry up. And so I like to take my time. Mm -hmm. That's how it goes. I like to take my time. I like to take my time. I mean that when I have to do a thing. I I mean that that when I I have have to do do a thing. thing. I I like to take my time and do it right. I like, like to, to take, take my time, time and do it right. Can we get all that? Nope. Maybe. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> do it again. <laughs> I like to take my time. I mean that when I have to do a thing, I like to take my time to do it right. Good luck. Here we go. I, I like, like to take my time. I mean that when I have to do a thing, I like to take my time to do it right. Five, one. Uh huh. I mean, I just might make mistakes. I mean, I just just might make mistakes. mistakes. If I I should have to hurry up. If if I I should have to hurry up. So I just like to take my time. So So I just just like to take my time. All right, let's try it. You can do it. I like to take my time. I mean that when I have to do a thing, I like to take my time and do it right. I mean, I just might make mistakes. I mean, I just might make mistakes if I should have to hurry up. And so I like to take my time. And he goes like this. To tie my shoes, to eat, to get dressed, to fall asleep at night, to sing a song for you. 
in everything I do. And you know this part. I like, like to take my time. I mean like that when I have to do a thing, I like to take my time to do it right. Nailed it. I mean I just might make mistakes if I should have to hurry up. And so I like to take my time. Oh, I doubled the third. Oof. <laughs> beautiful gentlemen Beautimus, beautiful oh you know what that's the beauty of it like mm-hmm. we make mistakes yes we do and that's okay that was my favorite thing about mr rogers neighborhood is he made mistakes and then he just talked to the camera about it and mm-hmm. then he fixed them and he was never in a hurry in post <laughs> no <laughs> no don't you do it was beautiful Fred, yeah mr rogers is dope and everybody who's ever been a parent knows like you just it's just maddening to wait on a toddler to do everything and so like your whole life is get your shoes on get your jacket and then to hear mr rogers sing something sit like that, down so, and eat right <laughs> <laughs> uh. yeah it takes kids a long time to do stuff but it's hard to remember all the things you have to do when you're small it's true Mark, so. thanks so much. Yeah, hey, right, thanks, thanks for, for letting you. me come back. Dude, yeah, we'll have you again. That's going to yes. be a promise. Um, but I know you're, like, how can people reach out to you if they want to, like, see, like, what kind of cool stuff's happening in Chula Vista or if yeah. they want to reach out and understand more cool stuff? Where- um, so to follow along with what's happening in Chula Vista, you can follow VAPA CVESD on Twitter. Um, so that's just about Chula Vista stuff and those mm-hmm, happenings. Mm-hmm. If you care about my personal life, you can here's my cell phone number um <laughs> six <laughs> five 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 um <laughs> that sounds like darlene's number yeah, my goodness it? did she steal my number she stole your number <laughs> um uh, mr keemer is my twitter handle cool, cool, um, cool. so you can find me there i'm not a huge poster um yeah, that's fine if they yeah. want to reach you anyway they can reach you there yeah you, know. you can mm-hmm. dm me there or you can reach me through the chaotic harmony team mm-hmm. cool 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 speaking of character harmony team crystal where can they reach you you can find me at finny vapa on twitter you can find me at mrs dot pridmore on instagram and you can find me at crystal pridmore.com mm-hmm. and you can find me at mr seligman m-r-s-e-l-i-g-m-a-n mark has mastered this already with his mouthing um that's awkward uh, <laughs> i'm an avid listener bro you're an avid listener um <laughs> on all the socials on twitter on instagram on tiktok you can also uh, you can also E, uh, reach us at ch classroom on all the socials except for of course youtube that's at youtube.com slash chaotic harmony classroom speaking of which you can also email us at chaotic harmony classroom at gmail.com thank you so much for listening to us for three seasons or if you haven't listen to us in the back log and jump on bye, bye. The Chaotic Harmony Podcast is a joint project between Crystal Pridmore and Jonathan Seligman. You can find us online at chaoticharmonyclassroom.com. You can email us at chaoticharmonyclassroom at gmail and let us know what you think. Give us feedback about what you would like to hear in future episodes. We're on all the socials. Find us on facebook.com slash chaoticharmonyclassroom. You can find us on Twitter at chclassroom, Instagram at chaoticharmonyclassroom, and you can even find our episodes on YouTube. Chaotic Harmony is the name of our channel. Special thanks to Brian Pridmore for his help with production and equipment. www.pridmoria.com Yes. Really quick though, yeah. Because it's public domain, someone's making a horror version of Winnie the Pooh. Wait, it's Winnie, I mean, Winnie the Pooh, Blood see, and Honey. See, it's the, a real thing. That no, is that's the beauty. Okay. You know, no, that's the beauty of public domain. It allows art to be art. And yes, oh sometimes God, trash Jonathan. is made. No, sometimes trash is made. But the opposite is that Disney controls the rights towards it. And like, I'm not for that. I'm all so, about it. Disney, you can have as much as you want. Mm, you say that until it gets really bad. <laughs> okay. Um, so <laughs> all right. Cool. I'm at 9.30. Hey, that Hansel hey. is so hot right now. So hot I'm at 9 right o'clock. Now. I'm uh, now at 9 o'clock. How's Axel? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, he's <laughs> so loud. <laughs> How is my air my horn? <laughs> How is me yelling into the mic? <laughs> no! I completely forgot about That's that. That's fine. No one cares about clarinets. Her beginning strings. Dear Fire. God.
they sounded so good. good. Yeah. It, like, they had a nice full sound. Their bowing was incredible. Like, super good. She um, said her orchestra was fire this year. It good. was so good. Yeah, That's Caitlin, good. Caitlin Caitlin's stepping in hands. something real nice. Um, That's so, awesome. Cheers. Cheers. Dink.